Okay, um, I haven't done a video in a while, so I'm actually going to do one now because um, uh, I was looking around for actually a copy of a uh, uh, version of macOS Catalina to install um, within, you know, VirtualBox, you know, for, you know, specific use. Um, so... I just figured that I would, you know, install it within VirtualBox. I don't actually use VirtualBox that much um, anymore because I switched over to QMU because I guess, it's, you know, it basically VirtualBox is based on uh, QEMU, but um, doesn't perform as well as QMU for me um, or do as many things as I wanted to do as, you know, um, VirtualBox doesn't, but um, there's only a few things that actually I can do in VirtualBox, like seamless mode and stuff like that, that that I can't actually do in QEMU that at this time that I you know know how to do. But um, going getting back to um, this, I, I needed to be able to install uh, a copy of uh, macOS within VirtualBox and. Um, the only problem is that um, the, the copies of the ISOs that I actually had on my computer um, gave me an error when I was trying to, you know, after I set up the, you know, the virtual box, you know, the, with the proper environment to install um, Catalina, um, it, it always failed with this, you know, an error message that um, I didn't know how to fix. So what I was actually doing is I was actually, you know, searching around to begin with for a way to actually um, fix the error that I was actually having um, with the software um, not being able to install macOS within VirtualBox. And, and um, I also experienced that when I'm trying to install it on other systems. So... Um, since I didn't find any real way to um, fix that error, I uh, was searching around. I was still searching around for um, something that actually would be, uh, you know, another alternative to actually get it macOS installed in within VirtualBox. And and um, what actually I I found. At that time is actually, you know, this software would actually, which actually allows you to install uh, Catalina within VirtualBox. Um, and it's, you know, pretty much, mo you know, automated. What it does is actually, um, it, uh, you know, um, you run the script after you've configured it. And then basically what it'll do is actually, you know, uh, download all the uh, required files from um, Apple site and then basically do the installation and you know um, if you're using Linux um, and you know uh, have all the required software installed on your computer it actually can actually um, install um, you know either High Sierra Mojave or um, Catalina within VirtualBox, and you know you don't even have to be you know around, you know for for it to um, be done because it it uh, actually can be automated. But um, essentially, I'm using Linux Mint right now, and um, you know all that's required to, you, you, for you to actually have installed on your on your version of Linux is actually you know these programs here. And then, um, you know, so it would actually includes, you know, many things that um, are, may be already installed, but you may need to install, you know, certain things like, I don't know what XDD is, even, and, and or uh, I did have DMG to IMG installed um, because I use that for, you know, converting other uh, files. And obviously I had, you know, virtual box. I don't, you know, like I say, I guess I mentioned that I don't use... Virtual box as much as they use, you know, key up you, but um, there's just some differences, you know, where I wanted to be able to install um, 
a cop, you know, Catalina within VirtualBox instead of QAMU. So um, that's why I was doing this. And so, um, like I said, I would mention that basically the whole, you know, install process can be automated, but um, that just requires you to actually have this Tesseract OCR software installed, which actually, you know, will watch, you know, maybe just a window, you know, like the virtual box window and, and you know, it'll monitor the progress of the installation and then when, you know, uh, a certain time comes along, it'll actually, you know, input um, uh, other, you know, commands into a terminal window um, and then, you know, proceed on with the installation. But like I say, you know, by having this, you know, all the software installed, it actually can be fully automated. And without the um, OCR software, it might, you know, they, they, the, the author suggests that it might take, um, or you may need to press enter, you know, uh, less than 10 times, but you'll still have to uh, wait around until, you know, you're prompted to do something and then just do it. Um, like like in this case, just basically press enter, um, you know, to progress with the script. But like I say, you know, it does work and it can be fully automated. Um, you just have to have um, all the resources installed and then have the, you know, the download of the script. So what I can do is basically you can download the zip, which I've already done. And so... Um, what I actually did is I basically created a folder and put the files that I needed in, in that folder. Um, this Mac OS gets virtual box uh, SH file is actually the, you know, the script that I'm going to be, you know, that's going to be run to install, um, Catalina within virtual box. Um, but first you actually have, you know, you, you would want to edit it. I don't really know what the defaults are because I, I changed it and don't have the original copy. Um, obviously, I could download it again and just, you know, be at the defaults, whatever it was, but essentially, I don't need to do that. So, um, what I need, do need to do is actually, um, you know, specify um, certain, you know, customizable, you know, information in this, in the script before I actually run it. And so, I change the name to the VM name to Catalina from what it was Mac OS and then uh, the release name or you know the the one that I actually you give want to install as Catalina versus High Sierra or Mojave so I just changed it to that um, I decided I'm just basically just going to have it installed on a 40 gigabyte uh, virtual image and you know the virtual image type is going to be VDI. So essentially, that's the only change that I really made. I don't, I, you know, it, um, but I did actually actually uh, change the resolution to something besides 1280 by 768 or whatever it was before. But I changed it to 1920 to by 1080, which is actually the resolution that I want to try. And so. Um, after you make all those changes, basically you can, you know, you just, you know, close the script um, and make sure the changes were saved. And then basically you can just open a terminal window. And I just basically did so within that directory because I didn't mention that. Um, I, I create a folder and put the, you know, the script within that folder because um, there's going to be all kinds of other files and stuff that are downloaded and you know uh, data that's actually put in the folder so um, wherever you run the script from is going to be where all those files are actually you know downloaded to and um, in place so if you actually just you know have it on the desktop there's going to just be a, a bunch of files that are on your desktop that uh, you know uh, you know, are actually going to be in this folder instead because I just don't want it, you know, to clutter up my desktop. Um, 
So essentially, um, I you know put the script in the folder and basically open the terminal window within that folder. And all I need to do to start is basically you know run the script. Um, and what it's going to do is basically you know just come up with some information. Uh, you know, it does say that you know requires 50 by 50 gigabytes available, but I know that's um, uh, it can get by with less. But maybe what I'll do is actually I'm going to I'm going to just make a minor change just in case. Uh, I am going to just, I am going to bump it up to 60 because, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to keep the, you know, the files afterwards, but I still need to, you know, to make sure that, you know, it has enough space to actually install. So I'm going to just go with 60 uh, rather than 50, just, you know, to make sure that, you know, it has enough room for temporary files, so forth and so on. So, um, I'm running the script again, and if I press enter, it's basically just, uh, you know, repeat the customization the variables that I actually set. Um, and then after I verify that, you know, those are what I want, I'm just going to go ahead and press enter and it's going to start the process. Um, what it did is actually popped up the virtual box window. And um, obviously, I, you will have the guest window open. You can see that there's a uh, you know, files that are created and deleted within that, it, within the folder. But, you know, the process going on, you know, basically it's, it's, it's downloading the required files from, from Apple at this time. And then so, um, like I say, basically what was, you know, what was created is this actually this uh, Catalina VM um, that's actually going to be you know what everything is um, configured to use, but you know that's why the you know the uh, virtual box window was popped up is you know, it just it just created that VM name, which is actually used for um, you know uh, the whole configuration for uh, Mac OS Catalina within virtual box, but. Um, I may just pause this video because um, what it's actually doing is it, what you see it's doing and and it's downloading you know the required files to install Catalina within the virtual box and I think the main install ESD file is probably closer to uh, 15 gigabytes download I think it might be the next one that actually is downloaded here or it starts to download, but it's closer to, uh, it doesn't show it, yeah, well, but anyway, it's, it's closer to, I think, 15 gigabytes, and all it does is show the progress of, you know, what the download at this time, but I think, you know, I think it's actually going to be, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. It does say estimated uh, time of, uh, of arrival or ETA is actually 28 minutes at this time. 28 minutes, and uh, it goes up and down, you know, based on the you know the the current download speed, which you know can vary on my computer, obviously, as, as it probably does on most computers. And so it's only two percent done. So what I'm going to do is actually pause the video, and then I'll just basically come back. Um, when this whole process is, you know, progress a little bit further along. I don't know if this, I can't remember that all the files that actually needs to download. So, um, in theory, there's only like a half a minute left or less than half a minute or 22 seconds, 21 seconds before um, this specific install ESD DMG file is actually downloaded. Um, and I can't remember, like I say, I can't remember all the other files that actually needs to download after that, but, um, this is actually, uh, 
last file. Yeah, it looks like it was the last file. So it's continuing on with the installation here, creating, um, I don't know, you know, I guess I don't know everything that's actually going on in the script. Looks like it's basically just creating partitions um, with certain data in them before initializing thing but yeah, actually it looks like it was creating the image file so it not only initializes VirtualBox and it's actually just booting up VirtualBox with the, the downloaded files um, or the files that it actually downloaded and uh, progressing with the installation um, if in theory you were actually you know not around to actually watch the, you know what's going on you could just leave, you know leave the you know the copy of virtual box in full screen mode so the uh, other software can actually monitor the progress and then you know, um, enter you know the required information when needed but um, I'm just going to minimize this. This is like attempting automated re recognition of virtual machine a graphical interface. Please wait. So I can I can just resize that so you can see. This is just the initial uh, first startup, and so you can see what's going to happen next which normally always is that uh, you'll have to partar you know, the partition the dish, disk or virtual disk that was actually created. And, you know, like I say, I was, you know, the, the size that I actually had was 60 big gigabytes just to make sure there was actually enough space. So um, this is still working to load, but eventually it will. And then you can just, you know, see that... Uh, is just going to progress along and enter things in the terminal as needed when it reaches a certain point but um, so actually I, this is where if you actually were going to do this manually it's just like any 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 uh, Mac OS installation you basically have to first you know load the disk utility um, and, you know, format, partition and format the, uh, the disk image. And I don't, I don't recollect how this actually does it, if it does it actually at the command line. But now you can actually see that I, I'm not touching the keyboard. And, um, like I say, the software is actually, should be monitoring, the, you know, the progress in the background. And so hopefully this should just go away after a while here this language screen which it did and then you know basically we're back to the utility screen um and like i say it's it's still monitoring what's going on on the screen and um if you were actually doing this manually you would actually load the disk utility which i, I don't know you need to do but um what it actually did, it, it, it opened a terminal window. And I think, you know, obviously I don't know all the commands, you know, to manually um, uh, create and uh, partition and create uh, a file system on, you know, a virtual disk. But actually this is pretty much what it's doing. And then I think... Okay, so started unmounting disk, creating part partition mapping, waiting to part, maybe waiting for partitions, you know, formatting, you know, the partition, um, copying. It looks like it's just basically copying the, you know, the all the file data. What it's doing is basically con 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 concatenating the, you know, all these files that it created, you know, split up previously together again. And then basically, you know, is reading rebooted virtual box. And then it should actually load from uh, some uh, 
variation of you know the, the files that or the image that it actually created. Um, and so I assume that's what we're going to actually see here. So we'll just have to wait until it loads. Um, you know, I, like I say, I don't know. I don't know if, if if a person was actually using their computer. I'm not sure if it would be, you know, still monitoring this basically this virtual box window, which actually would be def defined as Catalina running Oracle VM virtual box. Um, but I think the software actually can you know, monitor just a window so it doesn't matter what else is going on on the computer. It can still monitor the progress of what's going on in the window. So, but, you know, just to be on the safe side, if you were actually going to start this progress and walk off and go watch TV or go to bed or whatever, you just want to have this, you know, um, at least this virtual box window um, in the foreground if not the only thing running on your computer. I mean, it, it could be, you know, maximized, but um, it doesn't have to be. But in theory, you know, if it's just in the foreground, it'll still work. Um, but I don't know if it actually needs to be, because like I said, the software may just want monitor the progress within a window. And so even if, you know, the... The virtual box instance is minimized. It may be able to still monitor the progress within the window, but um, just be safe. Obviously, you you if you were going to walk away, you just want to make sure that um, the virtual box window that's doing the install is is max maximized in the foreground, just so it doesn't fail um, part way through. So. Um, Obviously, we're just waiting for, you know, th this time actually we're going to, you know, it's going to pop up into the utilities window again, but then it'll just be closed out and then basically a terminal window will actually be brought up and basically, you know, all the commands entered in that terminal window to, you know, to proceed with the installation. And um, I'm just kind of sitting back here watching it and... <laughs> <laughs> blabbing on about you know how the installation is going to go so like I say this will eventually be closed and you know another terminal window will be open and, and the commands entered into the terminal window uh, to proceed with the installation progress and so I just have to wait for that to happen um, it's, I guess you know that just happened so fast that it closed that window and we're open the terminal window. So actually it'll, it'll notice that the terminal window is actually open and enter, you know, the, the next commands to proceed um, in a bit here. So I don't know what that was, but anyway. Um, okay, so... So I guess if you do it at the command line, you basically just, you know, run uh, in, you know, they start to install SH or, you know, uh, or just basically a script that uh, looks like it's preparing, preparing to run the uh, Mac OS installer. So it's actually running the installation right now just at the command line and basically just, uh, you know, progress as a percentage um, and so this part is actually almost done it's more than halfway done so I can't remember what happens after this because like I said I just I just tested it you know like once or twice and didn't really pay that much attention to the progress because I was paying more attention to if it would actually work on the uninter uninterrupted to actually install Mac OS without um, any user input, which you know, like I say, you know, I verified that it actually is possible. So um, looks like we're almost three quarters of the way done with this preparing. 
and then I think the, you know, maybe possibly the next process is actually going to take some time, and I may have to um, uh, pause the video for you know a bit until um, you know this progresses a little bit further into the installation. But I'm just going to see here. So basically, it looks like it's good. Just basically just decided it's, it needs to restart again because it prepared the essentially the you know the virtual disk so um, everything has been done so that this is actually now booting off of the virtual disk um, with all the information on the virtual disk rather than um, on files that actually uh, you know were downloaded to, you know to create the virtual disk so um, this actually might take several minutes like a you know a regular Mac OS install does, but um, I may just wait until it actually uh, is to the point where it's actually, you know, the, I see the progress bar and it tells me how many minutes it, it thinks it's going to take to, um, you know, uh, to complete the rest of the installation. So I'm just going to wait for this to boot. And then... Um, like I say, I think it's going to, you know, um, bring up a progress bar that's going to, you know, give us a timeline for, um, you know, completing the installation. But I won't know until it actually, or I actually see it. So, Looks like it's proceeding on as, as it should, but like I said, just looking, waiting for it to get to the graphical interface. So at this point, I think you know this basically this progress bar will you know um, come up with uh, some text information on you know the progress of the installation. Um, or it might just boot into Mac OS completely and then, you know, then uh, revert back to a progress bar. But I'm not sure yet because I can't remember um, from the last time it actually, you know, I, I tested the install. So, um, but I do I believe at this point, it, you know, obviously is, is, is into the base uh, of installing the system. So like I say, I, I, I figured actually, you know, it would be, have the progress bar and it would come up with this text showing, you know, that it has about 11 minutes remaining to um, complete the install. And then um, after that, the script may quit. And then uh, it actually will reboot into the uh, configuring, you know, um, a user account and all the other information that you know is required but um, it's actually um, will be a working copy of Mac OS Catalina within VirtualBox um, and pretty much the only thing I had to do was basically start the script and um, and wait for it to get done which you know now it looks like it's gonna be 10 minutes but I'm actually gonna pause this video um, for, you know, possibly, you know, until it actually gets closer to being, you know, uh, you know, being closer to be uh, actually being installed, um, before, you know, we're starting the video, but actually, I, it, you know, even if it says 10 minutes, it's just, uh, you know, a number on the screen because obviously, you know, 10 minutes a minute, uh, you know, in an install can actually take five minutes. Um, so uh, I just don't know that it's actually going to just take 10 minutes, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to pause the video until um, the installation is almost done and I'll be back. Okay, I was going to continue this because it looks like it says that there's basically less than a minute remaining for the install to complete. 
and then it'll just basically reboot and we'll be into the uh, configuration process so that looks like I don't know if it's yeah, it looks like it's restarting now but while it's restarting I'm gonna go through this basically the uh, at the point when the you know, progress bar actually came up and it was actually you know um, that was the you know, final part of the install so the the script actually exited and basically you know um, completed all, everything that it needed to do so essentially you can see that basically it created all these files within this folder and like I say wherever you know you have it on your desktop you know, it would actually create these files um, and the only one that you actually would need to keep is the one that you know is is the name of the VM name dot VDI and so um, if you left it up to you know basically you know, to the for the script to delete them you would actually have to wait until uh, uh, you know the you know the virtual box session is is no longer open or basically in the system or save state and then you could actually just run the script uh, with you know the prompt to delete to you know with the um, command line basically to you know the prompt to delete the temporary files and then it would actually show all the temporary files and ask if you want to delete them and you can actually do so otherwise like I you know like I say you could just basically just you know essentially just select all these files and then just unselect the Catalina BDI file and that's the only one that you wouldn't want to delete because that's actually the you know the disk image that you know starts uh, Mac OS um, it's just you know out of place because I just you know was created in this folder that uh, that uh, I decided to use for you know to run the script but it actually can be moved to you know my actual virtual box directory which I'm actually going to do and show in this video but um, for the time being you know Catalina is still loading here and I might just I'm just gonna I'm just curious now because I changed the you know the video resolution to 1920 by 1080 to see if it'll actually load in that uh, you know in that resolution which it looks like it probably will and then basically go through the uh, configuration process real quick here and then I'm gonna show you uh, you know the final steps or you know the the things that you may want to do um, to, you know to finish up because uh, um, there's some files and configuration settings that need to be deleted you know or removed um, from within VirtualBox and other things so um, I'm just going to go go ahead here and, and see if I can actually finish up the installation I was trying to previously just you know enter my uh, U key to basically go down to the use and the, but it didn't work you know to initially start with so but anyway I'm just gonna continue I'm not gonna basically you know configure or you know basically set up a lot of these things that are in here so um, uh, so I'm not gonna obviously transfer information I'm not gonna try to set up my um, any uh, Mac OS uh, account or you know for using my account I normally don't do that you know just okay with the you know terms and conditions okay so then I set up my account hopefully I typed in the password the same nope usually don't do that when <laughs> I'm doing a video I usually mistype something so hopefully we can correct the progress here now no nope. looks like I did it again so I'm just going to enter
Hopefully that isn't a third time now. Okay, so creating the account, you know, using my personal information, password. Um, okay, then uh, I'm just going to continue on Express Setup. I don't want to share any information with, with Apple. Uh, Don't you normally use Siri, but um, and so I'm not going to bother, you know, right now to do anything. And I may not keep this set up no matter what because I, you know, I won't use it because I don't normally use, you know, virtual or uh, Mac OS and virtual box because it, you know, doesn't support or it doesn't actually perform as good as it does in QMU for me, you know, being a uh, Linux user. So, um, may not use that but I usually select auto for you know the look the interface rather than light or dark okay then this should be the final setup and then I just need to you know set up the keyboard and then it's pretty much done and then I can go on to um, deleting you know the unneeded files and, and uh, moving the uh, disk image file to uh, its permanent place so I'm going to continue here left side you know the right of the left hand key shift key right right side of the or left side of the right hand shift key then i'm done then I'm basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to shut down okay like i say you know um the system has to be completely shut down and i'm just going to do it so I can actually show you what this interface looks like. So I'm just going to make sure that VirtualBox session is ended. Have the actual folder that the files are in now. So enter that command. It asks me, you know, it basically shows all the files. And then ask me if I want to delete them. I'm just going to say yes. And then you can see where pretty much all of them are deleted except the you know the script itself and the you know the VDI file that I need to use. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this VDI file to just so I can show you. I may not keep it, but I need to actually you know show you uh you know how to, how to move it so i basically just copied it and, and i'm pasting or cut it and i'm pasting it into the, my virtual box folder under the catalina folder that uh all my configuration files are at um and what i'm actually going to do after that i'm just i suppose i'll uh Get the virtual box open I can do some other things while I'm waiting for that to happen so um, need to go under the virtual machine manager and you can see basically there, there's a few things that I just I'm, do, I'm just going to delete obviously everything uh, flagged in yellow can be you know removed because it's it's not there anymore Okay, so then I can go into the settings for this version of Catalina. Like, see, everything was auto configured for me, and you know, basically it used the, you know, name Catalina being Mac OS X, um, and based on the you know Mac OS High Sierra 64-bit, um, we can up or change any of these settings that you know if you want after the fact but by default it's actually you know set to whatever you know is configured in the in the script beforehand you know the size of the you know the uh, catalina disk is this size but let me see here what i'm actually gonna do is i'm going to remove that and i'm just gonna um, because i moved it and then click on add hard disk and then um 
I'm basically going to, well, actually what I, I didn't do and I should do is go into the virtual disk manager and I need to remove, the, you know, this version of Catalina that, you know, thinks it's actually, you know, in the folder on my desktop. And then now I can actually go back in here and I can click on add hard disk, click on add, click on that, choose, click on OK. Then basically, you know, I moved it to it, it's, you know, the you know, where it should actually be in, in the, you know, the, in the virtual box VM folder uh, in the inside of the Catalina folder. So that it's not looking for the you know the, the boot file on the on the desktop in the folder. So I could delete this, but I may want to use it again. But you know now we're back to the script, and if we want to just run Catalina, basically from scratch here now. I, really don't need to do this but obviously you know it's like uh, make sure everything is in place I moved the you know move the disk image to the you know that folder like I said and so I'm just gonna check and make sure everything works properly and then basically that'll be the you know end of this video and so um, I just thought it was, you know, interesting. Basically, I don't know that, you know, many people will actually be able to uh, uh, do this because you know, obviously most of the people, you know, that might watch this video don't actually use Linux, but, you know, a few may. Um, I'm just a full-time, you know, Linux user, so I basically do a lot of the things I, you know, um, as far as uh, in other operating systems, in virtual operating systems, and my my computer is actually set up to you, you know, has a, you know, multi-core Xeon processor in it because I just, you know, Xeon processors actually have obviously more cores, so I can actually dedicate a few cores to, you know, different operating system like you know, like I think this one actually has two. And um, I'm just checking if it booted, you know, and so let me see, I can't remember. I'm going to actually go into full screen mode. And so, you know, because I'm a Linux user, I can actually, you know, because I have uh, using Confiz, I can actually just have that uh, copy of uh, Mac OS on one screen and you know loaded and, and working and be doing something on another screen so what I'm actually going to try to do here is actually I'm going to go ahead and actually resize this to uh, scale mode again and then you know because it's in scaled mode what I can do is actually I can move it to you know another desktop so actually I moved it to the you know the fourth one. Then what I can actually do is I can actually, you know, choose to again basically, you know, on, on Linux control home brings up the menu and then I can change the view state to full screen again. So um, even though it's not optimal, it actually can, you know, uh, have better, you know, hardware support it, by using, you know, VirtualBox, I mean, I'm not, not VirtualBox, but QEMU, you know, which uh, I would prefer, or I do prefer using, uh, I just, you know, had to make this middle because I, you know, thought it was real interesting, you know, that, um, you know, you could have a fully automated, you know, install of Virtual or Catalina, Mac OS Catalina and VirtualBox, you know, um, and not have to have anything except, you know, the script to run. Um, I just can't, 
you know, it might be possible to actually, you know, it says in the, uh, in the, you know, conf you know for the readme file that it actually can be done on Windows. I just wouldn't be able to tell you how to do it. So, you know, maybe somebody else would actually make a video of that. But um, since I don't run videos or Windows usually as a, you know, uh, operating system except in anything but a virtual environment, uh, you know, I wouldn't need to or want to, you know, um, run virtual box within Windows because I just don't, you know, need to. So essentially, um, this, I'll probably just end the video here and, and uh, uh, thanks for watching and hopefully to see you again, you know, with my next video.